I do think he is one of the great master action directors of the last 40 years. Mm-hmm. In his own way, he's one of the most influential filmmakers of, 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 of this last uh, 30 years. I mean, um, you know, he kind of created that style. And then all of a sudden, every other mid-range Hollywood action movie is trying to copy his style. Michael Michael Bay style is yeah. Tony Scott's style, yeah. except more. <laughs> right. And not necessarily to a good effect. Tony yeah, has the right balance. There's even that aspect, though, is before Tony Scott was just uh, his his style was, you know, the fast cutting in mm-hmm. your face, this and that. After Tony died, I rewatched all of his movies like within a two week period. Well, you know, I mean, look, look, there was a, I'm here to tell you there was a time in the 80s. It was not cool to yeah. like Tony Scott. I mean, he was denigrated. All right. Oh, Ridley was the one. He's just the commercial hack. S- screw this. And I was, you know, and I was fighting all by myself. And I would I would actually use Douglas Sirk as, yeah. uh, as a, a companion, even though their films aren't alike. I was like, look, in the 50s, Douglas Sirk is making these soap opera melodram- melodramatic movies. They're actually the, the highest grossing movies in Universal's history. And he got no respect because no one had respect for the genre and they was just tr- considered commercial trash. Yeah. You know, and now they teach him in school and now he's considered the king of melodrama. So I used Tony Scott. So I used that as an analogy for Tony Scott in the 80s. Right. And one of the really great things is in the last, like, you know, 25 years, his reputation has, you know, finally finally caught up with his success. You know what one of the greatest fucking scripts ever written in the history of Hollywood is? What? Top Gun. Oh, come on. Top, Top Gun, Gun is fucking great. What is Top Gun? You think it's a story about a bunch of fighter pilots? Yeah, it's about a bunch of guys waving their dicks around. It is a story about a man's struggle with his own homosexuality. <laughs> That's serious. That is what Top Gun is about, man. You've got Maverick. All right, he's on the edge, man. He's right on the fucking line. All right, and you've got Iceman and all his crew. Right. They're gay. And they are they represent the gay man. Right. All right. And they're saying, go, go the gay way. Go the gay way. He could go both ways. What about Kelly McGillis, right? Here. Kelly McGill, she's 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 heterosexuality. She's saying, no, 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 no. Go the normal way. Play by the right. rules, go the normal way. Right. And they're saying, no, go the gay way. Be the gay way. Go for the gay way. Right. All right. That is what's going on throughout that whole move. No, so I all- never showed up on a set for a true man. No, I didn't want no, no, I uh, uh I kinda didn't want to. I think they wanted me to, and I think they thought I was being weird. All right, and I wasn't being weird. I was uh, um, one. I didn't know what the hell I was doing back then. So I, I had this little idea that it was like, uh, well, if the writer's not going to be on set every day, he shouldn't be on set at all. <laughs> and maybe I didn't mean every day, but the idea is either I'm I'm, I'm making the movie with you and yep. we're doing it, and then uh, I'm coming up with ideas, or you're asking me to change things for whatever, and it's all working, or else. Just do what you want to do. <laughs> oh, it was magnificent. I'm, I, I love True Romance. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> he's, he's amazing. I mean, you know. And by the way, he did it. I mean, the, more or less, the things that happen in this, uh, with Floyd in the movie, more or less happen in the script. But the character that Brad played, that's all him. Yeah. That's that. That's, I, I can't take credit for that. That, that character is all him. <laughs> the death was so sudden and and tragic and uh, out of the blue. And uh, I've already talked about this movie on the, the Big Picture podcast a lot, so I don't want to go in too deep into it. But my number five is Tony Scott's Unstoppable. His second movie about a train starring Denzel Washington, uh, right, right after the picking <laughs> of fellow, one, two, three. And apparently the crew was calling the movie The Taking of Pelham 456. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you know, also, but, you know, this, this has a lot of hallmarks to a lot of uh, Tony Scott's other movies and actually Enemy of the State is a really good parallel with it. And it's one of those things that, you know, not realizing he's going to exit the stage, you didn't quite realize how, how strong the hallmarks were mm-hmm. yeah. maybe on the day that you were watching it. Uh, Crimson Tide had that, yeah. you know, with this whole calliope of characters that actually these smaller characters start intruding in on the story and start dominating the story at, at, at different pivotal moments. And you were like, hey, that is a Tony Scott thing. Yeah. Yeah, so and they're all filled with humor, all filled with like, you know, uh, 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 witticisms. I'm a huge Tony Scott fan and, right. and, uh, and I loved it when I saw it, but I mean, when I saw it again, it was like, oh my God, this is what he does just absolutely beautifully. I mean, it really is one of the best examples of a director going out on a incredible, you know, on, on like what he does, his, 
thing that he does better than anybody else. And just like an incredible high note. And, you know, and, and, um, and it was appreciated back in the time. I mean, uh, it made uh, uh, it made uh, A.O. Scott's top 10 list mm. for the uh, New York Times. And it, it, it just completely holds up. I mean, it's just such such an exciting movie. Well, it has that wonderful thing that Tony would do in his action movies where you have these great leads, but then you also have like this magnificent group of supporting characters, of these supporting actors that are just filling the frame and filling the corners and the, the wrinkles of the movie. It would definitely make my top 10 genre list. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so, and and that's kind of where I was coming from on it. And when I saw it, it just blew me away so much. Both the combination of just the movie that is the movie, the movie that's on screen, the movie that's there. And then the idea that it's just one of the last, great last movies of a director of all time at the height of his powers, doing what he does. And that's not even being nostalgic or sentimental. That is just, I think what it is. Yeah. All right. And and then even comparing it to all the other great genre movies this year, it was like it was like number 10. It was like number 10 on my top 10 yeah. of, of the decade. And frankly, now after watching it again for this, it should be higher. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting camera. through uh, glass reflections with a, a light blinking on them as the camera is, you know, their characters are moving from left to right and the camera's moving right to left. Yeah. It got fantastic it made, reviews. No one expected it to, you know, it's like, I mean, it's, look, it's a corny idea. We've seen the idea of a runaway train before. I mean, it's the very most basic idea. Yeah. Right. For like, you know, for a movie. And because of that, and then the fact that it was, just coming off of taking a Pelham one, two, three. Oh yeah, yeah no, Tom uh, uh, A.O. Scott put it on his top ten of the year. Yeah, all right. And actually, his 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 little capsule review for the top ten of the year was great. It was like sometimes a runaway train movie is exactly what you want to see. Yeah, <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> so you were, I think you're in a little bubble that people don't love this movie and don't talk about this movie. But I can't imagine bringing up. Tale. I can't imagine bringing up Unstoppable to anybody who hasn't seen it that then go, "Oh man, that was great." Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, but but there is actually an aspect about it is. It has that kind of snakes on a plane kind of thing where, okay, well, you get the premise, you know, the, 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 the premise is in the title. You can describe the movie in a sentence, basically. Yeah. And then the idea, though, is that that idea and that sentence and that premise is so completely in the in both the most funnest movie way, the most sophisticated movie way, uh, uh, just uh, 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 delivered. Yeah. In, in, but also in this really classy way. That it's just like, wow, when you give Tony Scott a premise like this with those actors and that script and when that kind of technology that he had is available to like to create, to orchestrate all that madness. Yeah. It's just like, well, of course it was going to be great. 